I'm Matt Zeitler. I'm a family physician, and I do a number of scan and dermatologic procedures in my clinic. Today, I'm really excited to talk about an approach to skin tags, or acrocordon, and how to get rid of them through a snip excision technique. Skin tags are benign, but they are often really bothersome to patients for a number of reasons. One, if they're in um, very cosmetically obvious areas, they can really bother patients, um, just look disturbing. But sometimes they also can get inflamed and irritated, particularly if they're um, along like, you know, where someone might shave or along a bra line or underwear line, they can really get snagged and kind of irritated. And so for all of those reasons, your patient may come to you and request removal. And this is a really straightforward procedure, a uh, snip excision technique. So I'm first going to go through a first First, of course, we would do our informed consent like we do with every procedure. We'd talk through risks, benefits, alternatives, and then once we have informed consent, we can get our tray ready. So on my tray for snip excision, I want to have the following. So one is some 4x4 four four gauze, just in case we run into bleeding. Bleeding is very rare with this procedure, but it's always good to be prepared. You also want to have some antiseptic, so some chlorhexidine or betadine swabs. I prefer chlorhexidine just because it's non-staining. It's a clear solution. You also wanna have a few different instruments. You wanna have some pickups, so some forceps to grasp the skin tag. You wanna have some iris scissors or sharp scissors to snip the skin tag. You wanna have a cautery agent for after. My go-to is aluminum chloride or dry sol. Um, this is a clear solution, can be applied with a simple cotton tip applicator, and is really good for hemostasis and cauterization. Other things you might see are mon cells, silver nitrate, or electrocautery, but those can cause permanent staining after the fact. Rarely, you may want to send the skin tag if you're a little bit worried that this may be not a very straightforward looking skin tag and maybe has some cancerous features and you wanna get diagnostic clarity, you can send it in formaldehyde for the pathologist to look at it. And then last but not least, you also wanna make sure you have a numbing agent for local anesthesia. And so I prefer to use lidocaine with epinephrine for all of my skin procedures, usually a one to 100,000 concentration. Sometimes I'll buffer it with some sodium bicarb just to take away a little bit of the bite from the pinch with the local anesthesia. And then you wanna have a Band-Aid for at the end to cover up. So the approach to this, of course, you want to get informed consent, set up your tray, you then want to drape the patient in the area, and then you want to clean really well. So we have two skin tags here on our model. One's a little bit larger than the other, but we're going to take care of both of these for this patient today. They've been really bothering him or her. So first I'm going to clean with some chlorhexidine. Chlorhexidine is activated by scrubbing, so I just want to scrub over the skin tags. About 30 seconds of scrubbing motion, which activates the chlorhexidine clean really well. Then I can set that aside. And then using my lidocaine with epinephrine, I want to provide some local anesthesia. I usually use a one and a half uh, inch 27 gauge needle for local anesthesia. I'm going to insert a couple millimeters away or a millimeter away from the skin tag or the acrocordon. I want to go in at about a 30 to 45 degree angle and I'm just going to insert just at the base of that acrocordon I'm gonna pull back, make sure I'm not in a blood vessel. I'm gonna apply some numbing medicine. It's gonna raise up that acrocordon nicely, give me a nice wheel underneath, really elevate that skin tag so that it's easier to snip. And then I've cleaned both here because they're in close proximity to one another. So I'm also gonna insert at the base of that skin tag, draw back, make sure I'm not in a vessel. I'm gonna apply some lidocaine, really raise that up nicely. And now I'm ready to do my snip. They're nice and raised, the area is numb. I'm gonna cover my anesthetic needle and set that aside. And then for the actual snip excision, the two instruments you really want to focus on are your forceps or your pickups and your iris scissors. And so I'm just going to gently grasp the skin tag with my pickups. And then at the base or the stalk, I wanna get as close, as flush to the skin as I possibly can. And I wanna make a confident, clean snip and excise that skin tag. And then I'll just set that aside. I'm confident these are skin tags. I don't need to send them to the pathologist, so I'll just set them aside. If there's any bleeding, I can quickly apply some dry saw with my cotton tip applicator. And I'll usually just apply that directly to the site that I've snipped make sure that it's hemostatic, there's no bleeding, and then I can move on to the second lesion. 
Again, grasping the skin tag with the pickups or the forceps, raising it up so I can clearly see the stalk, and then I wanna confidently cut, making my snip excision with the iris scissors. I wanna set that aside, and then I'm going to grab a little more dry, dry saw, and I can apply that directly to the snip site, make sure it's hemostatic. And then very last but not least, I can apply a couple of bandage just over those sites, tell the patient to leave it on for about 12 or 24 hours, then they can remove the Band-Aid and apply some petrolatum for um, once or twice a day. And these sites will heal pretty quickly just by secondary intention, sort of like a, a nasty razor burn. And the patient will be really grateful because you took care of their really disturbing skin tags and they will be more apt to come back and see you for further derm procedures. So that is skin tag snip excision. Thank you. This is Hippo Education.